Now I want to open this video with thank you to Dustin for making the comment about how the SSH directory looks in previous video of mine as it inspired me to redo this. So let's look at it this way. What do we want to achieve? Well in this case we want to achieve an SSH session using public key authentication to a Windows machine so that us Linux admins or just enthusiasts can manage a Windows machine from a Linux machine. Now, as you can see, I've been able to connect to my Windows machine without entering a password using the public key authentication. Now, with Google Plus shutting down shortly, I invite you to follow us on our Facebook page. Links in the description below. Now, setting up SSH on Windows realistically is not as complicated as it sounds. There's a couple of steps that you need to follow, and the first one we're going to start with is creating a directory for our download. Now what we're going to do is download the package from GitHub. Now we could try to use the Windows one that I've done in previous videos, in fact the one that inspired this video, but honestly as try as hard as I might I couldn't get the public key authentication to work with the key that was generated on my Linux machine. And given the fact that on their own repository they make a lot of comments about how not all key types are supported, I figured it's better to just go with the GitHub repository. So with that ado, we're going to download from GitHub our 64-bit version client um, because I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows. Believe it or not, if you do try the 32-bit version on the 64-bit version, you will in fact get an error on connection. But that's something that I found out the hard way, so let's just stick with the 64-bit package. So now that that's downloaded into my temp directory, the first thing I'm going to need to do is extract the temp file. So in this case, I'm going to follow the instructions and extract the temp file into the programs folder and the open sh. Now from there, we can go ahead and start the installation. But before we do so, uh, let's just quickly see what that looks like. So we can quickly see that our open SSH folder is now existing, which means our extraction worked successfully. If we CD into that folder, we should be able to see the contents of the folder, which in this case should contain a subfolder called uh, open SSH, I think. Uh, let me quickly check. Open SSH uh, Win64. And within that, we have the startup binaries and the installation. So in this case, there's an uninstall and an install script. So we're just going to run the install script. Now, to prove a point here, which is I kind of have this all mapped out in an automated script. So you don't actually need to run the install script directly from the folder. We're just going to go back down and we're going to run it from a completely different folder, in this case, temp. And that does the installation of our services. Now that the services are done, we can move on to the next step. Now this would normally be the part where we would configure the firewall. So since I've already done this earlier, I'm very likely going to get an error during this, although you should not receive the error for this. So I'm just going to hit the run. And as you can see, we got the predictable error, but not an unexpected one saying that it's already there. So that's fine. So we'll move on to the next step. So the next step is setting the services to start automatically, which for me is kind of important because if you imagine that you want to run SSH on a remote machine, you want to know that when it reboots that you can still SSH onto it. So that's a simple change of the service. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and check out some directories. So what I want to show you is that there is a folder, or in this case, lack of a folder because um, SSH or open SSH as it is stores the information and config files into the program data folder so if we try to look at the program data folder and the slash SSH which in this case is prompting me for a browser so I say let's try that again with a C in front of it so the system drive uh, program file sorry program data and you can see there's no SSH. So let's try one level further down. Or alternatively, we could just start the service. So what we do is when we start the service, it's going to create all those template files that I would expect to see in that folder location. So if we go back and we'll quickly try that again, 
um, this time what we should see is that we have all the template files there so they have now been created so in this case since it's a completely clean installation this means that it's going to have things like password authentication it's not going to have any changes of port numbers or other things that you might want to do but that's okay the file exists that's the more important part so with that said I now have a nice little script that in my case will disable public key, oh sorry, turn on public key authentication and disable password authentication. It's also going to hash out the match uh, admin group, etc. Because I'm going to use the administrator's SSH key. So we're just going to quickly confirm that those values are set as I would expect them to be. And you can see they're all updated. So now that we've made that change, what we need to do is restart the service for that to take effect. Simple enough, we'll do a restart dash service shdh, or sorry, hd. And from there, we should now have all of the configuration for the actual open SSH server. So now it's time to configure the keys under for our user authentication. So this is simple and straightforward. So we can go quickly to the uh, environment parameter user profile, or we could just type out the path uh, users administrator, but we'll, we'll just simply use the shortcut for the moment. Um, we're gonna need to create a new folder. So first of all, we're gonna need to create the .ssh folder, because this is the directory of which our keys are going to sit in. Now that that's created, I'm going to be able to quickly uh, show you that there's nothing else there. And I'm going to paste in my SSH public key. So I'm going to use a simple echo command and then output to the authorized key file, which is needed in order for me to move forward with the final step. So if you have the key handy, you can simply do this. Or, or alternatively, you could maybe download the key from a repository somewhere that you have. Now the authorized key is on the machine, I can go ahead and connect remotely from my Linux machine. So jumping over to our Linux machine for a second, we should be able to now create an SSH connection to the Windows machine. Now since I cleaned out the uh, known hosts earlier, we should get a fresh fingerprint, we accept, and we are now connected to our fresh install. So we can do just something simple to prove that it's the same machine. Um, first of all, you see that the, the default installation takes us to the command prompt, not to PowerShell. So I just open a PowerShell session, quickly have a look. We can see that basically the configuration that we just created, like the .ssh folder is there. We can do a get service and do sshd, and we can see that it's open SSH running. And it's really as simple as that. Now this about sums it up. Uh, I will put a link in the description. And as always, uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.